Good morning. Good morning. We welcome you on this first Sunday of Advent as we begin our journey once again to Bethlehem. We welcome those who are worshiping with us for the first time either here in the sanctuary or online. And as the North Parish Ringers offer a prelude, we invite those seated on the inside aisles to sign the friendship pads and to pass them along. Again, I welcome you as you look around the church up in Fellowship Hall. You'll notice that things are a little different this morning. That is because we are hosting last night and later this afternoon at 4 o'clock the Ipswich River Community Chorus Christmas Concert. 
If you would like to hear some wonderful music, there are tickets that will be available at the door, and that is at 4 o'clock here in our sanctuary. Also, a bit of instruction. We begin the Advent season every year with O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. We are thankful for Kate uh, Dugan, who is the uh, oboist, and she will play an introduction at the beginning of the piece, and then after we have finished singing, she will also play an ending, and then we will move on to the uh, Advent wreath. The altar flowers this morning are given in loving memory of the wedding anniversary of Forrest and Helen Thurston. And I'm going to call upon our Minister of Discipleship who has a few announcements. Good morning. First of all, thank you to everyone who joined us for Advent Workshop last week. Thank you to the CE Ministry who planned and helped with all the craft craft. A special thank you to Sean Mahoney, who oversaw the kitchen and all the delicious soup and sandwiches, as well, well as Hazel Pickett and Kyle Hastings, who helped serve as well. There are some Advent family prayer sheets on the table in Putnam Hall if you want some prayers to read as you light your Advent candles throughout the season of Advent. Help yourselves. We also have on the bulletin board an Advent calendar full of family-friendly activities to do throughout the season of Advent. And I need some young helpers to help me turn them over. You can follow along on social media or when you're here during the week or on Sunday to see what those activities are. So far, pictures with Santa, make cookies for a neighbor, and of course, celebrate the first Sunday of Advent with our church family. Pageant prep is underway. Please save the date for December 17th. You are all invited to join us. The dress rehearsal will be the day before from 10 to 12 here in the sanctuary. Christmas in a box boxes. We still need quite a few more boxes if you're able to help us out. There was an increase in requests for that and need for that this year. Those are due back next Sunday. Shop and drop or drop and shop registration closes this Tuesday. That is next Saturday for children ages 3 to 12. So parents can take a little break and do their holiday shopping or go out to dinner. And the children will have dinner, a craft, and a movie. So we encourage you to join us for that. Children's Choir will be rehearsing in the sanctuary after the service today. And outreach. Today is the last chance to get your take a tag tag. I believe there are still 13 tags there. So outreach is also looking for some help. And those gifts are due back next week as well. Thank you. Did you announce about the care tree? No. no. Okay. So uh, out in Putnam Hall, as you make your way up to Fellowship Hall, you will see the care tree on a table. There are cards on there with names of members of our church family, friends who are at home, and this is an opportunity to send them a greeting uh, during this Advent season. And I'm going to also uh, ask if there are any announcements. We always end with the fair announcement on this uh, Sunday. And also occurred to me, after we finish uh, singing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, we'll all be seated for the lighting of the Advent wreath. So at this point, I'm going to call upon Heidi Hastings to... Now we'll call upon Heidi. Good morning. Everybody can hear me? Okay. First, a little joke. How much did Santa pay for his sleigh? Nothing. It was on the house. <laughs> Just wanted to share that. <laughs> You're going to be retelling that joke to somebody. So good morning, I'm Heidi Hastings, <clears throat> chair of this year's Frosty's Fair, and I am so happy to report that we had another fantastic year at Frosty's Fair. 
<clears throat> based on proceeds from Friday and Saturday, as well as some outstanding expenses and anticipated <clears throat> excuse me, post-fair sales, which we always have some drivel in of both, uh, the banking committee is estimating that this year's profits will exceed last year's number by more than $1,000. <clears throat> This year's estimate total right now is 22,500. <laughs> and this doesn't even include the Brasante UCC fundraiser coming up, hopefully you've all marked your calendars, Saturday, December 9th, where a portion of all sales in their store, no matter who is there buying it, for any all sales in the store goes directly to um, Frosty's Fair, a portion of their sales. So that's usually somewhere between three and five hundred dollars more. Um, the biggest exciting news of all that is that what we made this year is the most the fair has made in a decade. Wow. Yeah, so that's a real good. Thanks to everyone who helped make this a big success. A special thank you to Reverend Hughes and Nadine uh, for all the work that they do, as you all know, behind the scenes, and the Frosty's Fair Committee that I had the pleasure of working with um, for the past you know, four or five months for all the hours of hard work they put in. Thanks to everyone, there's so many of you that um, worked to make this fair another successful and rewarding year. And after church today, um, please remember to visit Fellowship Hall, where we still have some great bargains, as Debbie said, in Elegant Elephants, uh, also Bake Table, The Greens Table, and Rev's Crafts. Thank you very much. Also, a reminder that a number of people in our church family have not picked up their lobster bisque, so Pam, uh, Jeswaldo will be up there to um, hand out the bis, and I believe we do have two quarts that are orphans at this point, so uh, somebody wants a quart of bis, uh, please uh, see her. If there are no other announcements, then uh, let us begin our journey to Advent as we draw near to God's altar of grace. Please join me in the call to worship. Let us go over to Bethlehem. That we may rejoice in the blessings of Emmanuel. In all of the shopping, let us prepare our hearts to receive the gifts of God's only begotten Son. In all of the singing, let us listen to the sound of angels and many near the earth. Let us go over to Bethlehem. that brings us closer to peace on earth. And your will is
Today we begin our Advent journey to Bethlehem. It is a journey that will once again lead us to a humble stable and the blessings of Emmanuel, the God with us child. One of the blessings is waiting for us in that humble stable is the gift of hope. In a world where it's easy sometimes to feel a little overwhelmed, we all need the hope that comes from knowing that God's love makes all things possible. The Christmas story actually begins with a heavenly promise that brought hope to the heart of an old man and his wife. For years, Zachariah and his wife Elizabeth prayed for a child and their prayers were finally answered when the angel, Gabriel, announced that Elizabeth would give birth to a son who would grow up to be John the Baptist. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke and the angel Gabriel. Do not be afraid, Zachariah, Zachariah, for for your prayers have been heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John, and you will have joy and gladness in and many will rejoice at his birth. For all he will be great before the Lord, and many will, oh, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb, and he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord, their God, and he will go before him in the spirit and power of Eliza to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. We light this candle of hope and remember the message of hope that the angel Gabriel brought to Zechariah. Let us join in the Advent prayer. God of heavenly star and earthly stable, bring us once again to Bethlehem, where is the birth of the begotten Son. Son. You gave to a weary world reason to rejoice. Let the miracle of his birth in the darkness of the night fill us with the hope that chases away the shadows of doubt and despair. Then send us forth to bring your hope to all who are struggling and all who are searching. This we ask in the name of the Bethlehem child who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Now we wait. Please be seated. We gather this day giving thanks for the blessings of the Emmanuel child, the hope that can be found in him. Let us come now to God's altar with our tithes and our offerings as we give thanks for all of God's blessings.
join me in the prayer of dedication. God of heavenly star and earthly stable, in the cries of the Bethlehem child, we hear you calling us to your altar. May this offering bring to life all the blessings of the Emmanuel child within and beyond our family of faith. For we ask it in the name of the Christ who has come, will come again, and is with us even now. Amen. Please be seated. Please join me in the responsive call to prayer. Draw near to God and God will draw near to you. Good people, let us enter into this time of stillness that we might be one with our God. My friends, are there prayers that you would like to lift up to the Lord this day? Yes, Pam. I'd like to pray for my cousins, the Perry family. My Aunt Harriet passed away last Monday. So we lift up Pam's aunt's family, Harriet, Harriet. Uh, who passed away, and ask that God be with them. Lord, in your goodness. Hear our prayer. Yes, Sharon. Oh, Sorry. I, took the I took the long route. <laughs> um, I did, my daughter Shannon had a, a mild stroke about a week and a half ago. She's doing beautifully, full recovery. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd also like to say thank you for the good wishes after my surgery yeah. and the lovely uh, cranberry walnut thread from Aunt Baby. Ah, so uh, we give thanks for Sharon's successful surgery and we also pray for her daughter Shannon, yeah. Shane, Sh Shannon. Shannon uh, who um, has had a mild stroke but is doing much better and for that we give thanks. Lord in your goodness. Yes. Yes May. Um, I'd just like to ask for uh, prayers for my cousin uh, Michelle Canfield. She grew up coming here with my grandmother, um, she lost her son, Tyler, 
uh, unexpectedly last uh, last week. He was only 26. Oh my goodness! And her first name again? Um, Michelle. We lift up May's cousin Michelle on the loss of her son Tyler, who very young age, and very sad. Uh, and we ask that God surround them with grace. Lord, in your goodness. I also lift up in prayer a longtime member of our church family who moved a number of years ago to Maine, Kennebunk, and uh, received word that Jerry Messenger had a fall, and she is um, in a rehab right now. This fall was right before Thanksgiving, and so we surround her with our love and our prayers. Lord, in your goodness. And Yes, Millie. I'd like to pray two prayers. Mm -hmm. First is my cousin Nancy uh, died suddenly at 61 after okay. Thanksgiving. So we lift up um, uh, Shirley's cousin Nancy, who died unexpectedly, and ask that God be with her family. Lord, in your goodness. Yeah. And my second one is my granddaughter, who is at Ohio State University is hospitalized with pulmonary embolism. Oh dear, and her name? And her name is Liza. Liza, we pray for Liza, who is a college student out at Ohio State and uh, suffered a pulmonary embolism. Uh, we ask God's healing to be upon her. Lord, in your goodness. Yes, Tom. Uh, I learned Friday that my first cousin, Sally Parker, in Connecticut had passed away. So we lift up Tom's. Cousin uh, Sally Parker's family as they say their sacred goodbyes. Lord, in your goodness. And thought somebody had a hand, but I was mistaken. Also, we pray for uh, Jack and James Hudgens' brother in law, Bob Williams, who is living with cancer. We ask that God be with him. Lord, in your goodness. And I give thanks for all of you in this amazing, wonderful congregation and all that we can do when we share our gifts and work together. Lord, in your goodness. Yeah. Yes, Brenda. Goodness, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, as Rick had just uh, mentioned and stuff, um, I can't thank everybody enough for the donations that you give every year to the base table. Um, this year was an off year for me. I don't know if it's because I was traveling and it was late Thanksgiving, but I just couldn't quite get into the Christmas spirit this year. So I had a tough time, and my brother-in-law came up from Philadelphia to help me um, the last couple of days working and everything and stuff. And I get everybody's lives are busy. Um, I get that. And just, you know, he kept saying to me, I just don't understand why you just don't get recipes with one or two ingredients. Why do you have to do all these things? <laughs> 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 I kept looking at him like, that's a slice of made sauce. <laughs> <laughs> me this week, but we made it through, and we're still related, but, um, <laughs> you know, he's your cashier yesterday, but, um, but just all the thanks and stuff, because, um, you know, having my mom up here for two weeks all the time, um, you know, and then the girls lighting up the cupola every, every year, honor, um, just, just brought back a lot of memories and stuff this year, and, um, it just, melts my heart when I see people come back every year with the sort of gingerbread cookie, the peanut butter balls, or what it is. Um, I have a girl in my grief group that literally drove up from Sudbury yesterday um, to the fair. I met new people Friday night that had never been here with a young family, and I said, how'd you find out about it? They said we were at Richmond River. We drove by and saw the banner on the corner. So just spreading the word, um, I'm in a BNI group, and it's called Ask the Question, Have You Been to the Fair? So it's just spreading that word every year and just reaching out to people that might not have been here and, you know, to come to this community of faith and love and togetherness that we share every year has gotten me back into that Christmas spirit. So I thank you so much for your love for me and just for this community. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> The only thing I can say to that is amen. <laughs> Lord, in your goodness, let us pray. Holy One, we are full of your spirit this morning. We can feel it, the joy, the peace that we experience being a part of this community of faith. 
we have such an amazing gift to share with all who are searching, all who are suffering, and we pray that you will help us to let our light shine as we make our way through this season of light. And we pray this in the name of the Bethlehem child. Amen. I'd like to call upon David Baker to share this morning's scripture reading. Good morning. This morning's reading is from the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 5 through 23. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the division of Abijah. And he had a wife from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and statutes of the Lord. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren and both were advanced in years. Now while he was serving as priest before God, when his division was on duty, according to the custom of the priesthood, he was chosen by lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. And there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And Zechariah was troubled when he saw him, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great before the Lord. And he must not drink wine or strong drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn away, turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. And Zechariah said to the angel, how shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel answered him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I was sent to speak to you and bring, to bring you this good news. And behold, you will be silent and unable to speak until the day that these things take place, because you did not believe my words which will be fulfilled in their time. And the people were waiting for Zechariah, and they were wondering at his delay in the temple. And when he came out, he was unable to speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the temple. And he kept making signs to them and remained mute. And when his time of service was ended, he went to his home. Here ends the reading of the word of God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts upon the sacred scripture be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and always our redeemer. Amen. No way. That's what people say from time to time when 
they find it hard to believe that something actually happened. For example, he asked you to go to the prom with him? No way. You mean you got that big promotion at work? No way. What's that, Gabriel? You say that Elizabeth is going to have a baby at her age? No way. Because of Zechariah, uh, Elizabeth's advanced age, Zechariah didn't believe the news when Gabriel told him that his wife Elizabeth was going to give birth to a son. When Zechariah heard the news, he probably felt the same way that an atheist felt one day as he was rowing his boat across a lake over in Scotland. As the atheist was doing that, he got an unexpected surprise when the Loch Ness Monster suddenly appeared out of nowhere. And with a mighty swing of its tail, the monster sent the atheist and the boat flying high into the sky. If that wasn't bad enough, when the atheist looked down, he could see that the monster was waiting for him with his mouth wide open. In his despair, the atheist cried out, Oh God, help me, please, please help me. As soon as the words were out of his mouth, a voice thundered from the heavens, I thought you didn't believe in me. <laughs> Undeterred, the atheist cried out, Oh, come on, God, give me a break. A couple of minutes ago, I also didn't believe in the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> no way. That may be the way you think in the next couple of weeks as you rush here and there to get everything ready for Christmas. As the clock counts down to the big day, you might, you might find yourself uh, thinking, there's no way I'm going to get all of my Christmas cards out on time. Or there's no way I'm going to find the perfect gift for everyone on my list. No way. And it isn't just Christmas. Depending on what's going on in your life right now, you might be thinking, there's no way I'm ever going to be able to forgive that person for what he or she did. Or, there's no way I'm ever going to be happy again. No way. That's what you may be thinking when it comes to everything that's going on right now out there in the so-called real world with all of the conspiracy theories and the conflicts between politicians and people who seem to want to argue about everything under the sun, with all of the international conflicts and the natural catastrophes and the dire predictions when it comes to climate change. You may be thinking, there's no way that we're ever going to be able to work together to solve our problems. These days, it's easy to be full of doubt and feel a sense of despair. But there is good news. When you hear that, or when you feel that way, just remember Zechariah and everything else that happened in the days leading up to the birth of God's only begotten son. Now, we already know what Zechariah's response was when Gabriel told him that Elizabeth was going to give birth to a son. Zechariah basically said, no way. Believe it or not, that's also what Mary said when Gabriel told her that she was going to be the mother of the Messiah. Think back, when Mary heard the news, did she sing and celebrate? No. Instead of doing that, she said, how can this be, for I am still a virgin? In other words, no way, Gabriel, this can't happen to me. First of all, it's biologically impossible. And second of all, do you know what's going to happen to me when people find out that I'm going to have a baby and I'm not married? No way. Joseph also said the same thing when Gabriel told him that Mary was going to give birth to the Messiah. When Joseph heard the news, did he start handing out cigars to all of his friends? No. 
Instead of doing that, he decided to divorce Mary quietly. That was his way of basically saying, no way, Gabriel. There's no way that I'm going to let my good name get dragged through the mud because of this shameful scandal. No way. So think about it. Zechariah, Mary, and Joseph all said the same thing. No way. No way. No way. But each time God's grace and God's glory and God's goodness came back with the same answer. God's response to Zechariah was yes way. God's response to Mary was yes way. And you guessed it, God's response to Joseph was yes way. Good people, this is what Advent is all about. It's all about God and God's love that can do amazing things. God's love is what made it possible for an old woman to give birth when no one thought it could happen. God's love is what made it possible for a young woman to give birth when no one thought it was possible. Put it all together and it's simple. Advent begins with three adamant no ways. And it ends with two amazing births because of one awesome God. Yes, Advent is all about God and what God's love can do. Because, let's be honest, God's ways are not what we see out there in the so-called real world. There's a big difference between God's will and what we're seeing in the world around us. That difference can be seen in a story that was first told by the Reverend Dr. Jim Moore. At the time, he was a senior pastor at St. Luke's Church in Houston, Texas. In his book, Christmas Gifts That Always Fit, he shares a conversation that he had with a friend of his when the two of them got together one day for breakfast. The friend was a sales rep for a national company. And as they were enjoying breakfast, he shared a conversation that he had with his new sales manager. The friend was showing the sales manager all around the city. And at one point, they were just a couple of blocks away from the friend's house. So the friend asked the new sales manager if he wanted to stop by the house to meet his wife and children. In response to the invitation, the sales manager I did put it in my pocket. <laughs> Sales manager said, let's get one thing straight right now. I'm not interested in your family. I'm not interested in your wife or your children. I'm not interested in you personally at all or any of the circumstances of your life. All I'm interested in are results. All I'm interested in about you is your sales record. The friend went on to say, that really hurt. I felt as though someone had slapped me across the face. But you know, I realized something. I realized that God is the opposite of that. God is interested in my home and my family. God is interested in my wife and children. God does care about me personally. God is interested in all of the circumstances of my life. Good people, Advent is about God and God's love, what God's love can do. So keep praising God and keep following God's only begotten Son, because the more you do that, the more God will find a way through all of the no ways that keep you from the life that is truly worth living, the life that God has prepared for you.
Amen. As we gather around the table, we do so knowing that this table is open. All who wish to know the risen Christ are therefore welcome. As we prepare to share the bread and the cup, let us first join in our prayer of confession. Let us pray together. God of earthly stable and heavenly star, it is never easy to confess the wrongs that we have done and done. There are the hurts we have caused to those we love that we would just like to forget. There are the forgotten on the streets of our cities who we would rather not see. There are Christmas sales and festivities that lead us away from the manger and the blessings of the Christ child. So we open our hearts to you now, Emmanuel God, and invite you to enter in that we may find forgiveness of sins and fullness of life in the birth of your only begotten Son. Amen. People of God, hear the good news. If anyone is in Christ, that person is a new creation. The old has passed away, and the new has come. Let us rejoice and be glad, for in the Bethlehem child there is forgiveness of sins and fullness of life. And eternal life in his kingdom, which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto him. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts for all things have been made ready. Please be seated. Let us pray. Eternal God, you have created the heavens and the earth, giving life to everything. So we thank you for all the gifts of creation and for the gift of life itself. We are humbled that you have made us in your own divine image and that you continue to reach out to us in love when we act as though you have no claim upon us. As we gather around this table, we rejoice in Jesus Christ, the only one eternally begotten of you. 
who was born of your servant Mary and shared the joys and sorrows of life as we know it. Together we celebrate Christ's time. Until then, we ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon this bread and this cup. Bless all of us in our eating and drinking at the table that our eyes may be opened and we may recognize the risen Christ in our midst, in each other, and in all for whom Christ died. Amen. On that night, Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room. He took the bread, and after he gave thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, all of you, for this is my body broken for you. Ministering to you in his name, I give you this bread.
let us eat of the bread, and may the spirit of love that was in him be in us also.
let us drink of the cup and rejoice in the promise of everlasting life. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you've called us to your table and granted us the presence of the living Christ as you have strengthened our faith and our love for one another. Send us forth now into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. For we ask it in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. People of God, our service of worship has ended. Let us prepare to go forth wherever we may be to continue our service of love, knowing that our God goes before us. And may the blessing of God Almighty, creator Christ and Holy Spirit, be upon you all. Amen.